Hi, I'm Amanda. I flip furniture with my father, and we are flipping this dresser set today. Let's take a closer look and see what we've got going on. So right off the bat, you can already see that the finish is coming off. I don't want to know why, but it is super sticky. And even though the nightstand looks like it's intact, the top is not attached. So it does lift up and down. The other things you'll notice on our first examination is the front applique on the bottom drawer is broken. And we are missing a knob, so we'll have to switch those out. But step one, we've got to give this girly a clean. Cleaning doesn't have to be super fancy. I'm just using soap and water and a brush. No, it's not a toilet brush, even though it looks like one. It's important to clean your pieces, especially if you're painting, because there could be debris that's stuck on that's going to interfere later with paint adhesion or if you're sanding it all the way down to bare wood anything that's stuck on there could be ground into the wood even if your piece looks super clean you want to clean with a degreaser every single time because it's going to help lift up any oils remember you've been touching this furniture other people have been touching this furniture and there are oils all over it for the tough parts that I couldn't get with my brush, I'm using the back of the sponge. Just be careful if you're scrubbing with the sponge and you're not trying to remove the finish because that pad is rough and it could take off the finish. And the most important part after cleaning is make sure that you rinse. Look how dirty that water is. Ugh. Also, don't forget to scrub the inside of the drawers. If it's nasty on the outside, it's probably nasty on the inside. Holy dusty. Next up, take off all the hardware. While you're cleaning the drawers and removing the hardware, it's always good to look to see if you have any broken drawers. I actually ended up having two in this project. Be careful with broken drawers. Sometimes it's easy fix and sometimes it's not. It looked like someone had tried to repair this before me because there was a nail instead of a screw on this drawer track and not to be rude, but they did not know what they were doing when they nailed it in. Then I glued the back of the track down. However, I did not do a good job. I had to redo this. If your track is not perfectly straight or lined up with the drawer glide, your drawer is not going to fit correctly. So I did have to enlist the help of my dad eventually. And that's what I mean by sometimes it's easy fix and sometimes it is not. I also had three drawers where the the joints were loose. I went ahead and fully disconnected the joint and then re-glued and clamped. Now let's get into the real action. Let's strip these drawer faces. I just got my new fancy carbide scraper and I wanted to give it a go. And go it did. Look at it scrape all of that finish off. Highly recommend. It cut my sanding time in half. After I scraped, I sanded it down with 220 using my DeWalt sander and then carefully hand sanded the edges. Yes, it still was a lot of sanding. We'll revisit this. Then I stripped the top using the same method. Let's get up close and see what she looks like. Honestly, wasn't what I was hoping for. Looks like we're dealing with a thin maple veneer. This veneer had a lot of pith fleck, which are basically scars in the wood from bugs. It's just a visual defect, but not loving it. All right, here's what we got so far. My original plan was to strip the side drawers and the top and then paint the rest. And then I took a step back from here and I hated it. So let me know if you think I should have kept my original design plan because I did end up changing it up. But I just couldn't decide what to do yet. So in the meantime, I'm scuff sanding. Side note, I got this mask for Christmas and absolutely love it. Look how safe I'm being while I'm sanding. Is it overboard for my sander? Absolutely. But my lungs feel super safe in my body. So it's a win. I used a combination of a foam pad and paper to hand sand. I'm just trying to scuff up the surface and get any glossy finish off. So yes, that does mean I had to hand sand the crevasses in the applique too. I don't want to talk about it. It was tedious. But once it was all scuff sanded, I wiped it back with a little bit of water on a microfiber cloth. We don't want her dusty for when I prime. I also used tack cloth to help me get it out of the corners of the applique. Now you remember that bottom broken drawer. Finally time to fix it. Quick close up. Here's the damage. All right, we can fill this. Let's do it. I used Gorilla Stainable Wood Filler in neutral. This wood filler is thick so it was easier to mold in such a tight unique space like that. I started by just pushing a little bit into the space with my finger and then I use a skewer stick to kind of cut around the edges so I can make the shape of the applique. It's packed in there. We'll see what it looks like after it's sanded. Okay, I officially ditched the idea that I'm painting the center drawers. So I began stripping them all back. And then I hand sanded the routed details on the side drawers. Once everything was sanded, I wiped everything back with mineral spirits. Before I prime the piece, I noticed some nicks and scratches that I wanted to fill with wood filler, so I filled it, it's dried, and now I'm sanding it back with 220 grit. Give her another wipe down and she's ready for prime.
After I finished my first coat of primer, I noticed that I forgot to seal in my filler. So I had to do another round of filler and then seal it in with an oil or shellac based primer. I like to have a spray can on hand so I can just spot treat those areas. After the repairs were done and sealed, it was time for paint. I'm using one by Melange in Chai Latte. This is an all-in-one paint, so technically it has a primer, the paint, and the top coat built in. I like to prime with every piece, and even though this already has a primer built in, I prime for a couple of reasons. This is a light color, so a primer underneath is going to help with coverage. Primer also helps you see any dings and scratches you might have missed and it's like a trial to see if your piece is gonna bleed through i'm a primer enthusiast okay what do we think about the color i really wanted the center applique to pop i also in no way shape or form was gonna hand sand all inside all down to bare wood so i'm painting the center of the applique with chai latte i gotta get this crusty dusty off of it i don't have an air compressor so we're giving this a shot was i a little nervous using this absolutely the can gets like kind of cold i don't know if that's supposed to happen somebody let me know but the bottle kind of scared me so five out of ten experience did it blow the dust out yes was it scary also yes once it was dust free i used an artist brush to apply the paint Once my first coat was dry, I went in with 400 grit just to knock down any texture. I'm lightly sanding back and forth. Don't apply a ton of pressure. You do not want to nick your paint. Just a little caress. That also gives it a little tooth for your next layer of paint to stick to. When I was painting, I wasn't too worried about getting the paint on the face of the applique because I was just going to sand it off with 220 grit later. This is me doing that. All right, let's take a step back again. The center drawers have been stripped and painted. I also painted the routed detail on the outside drawers because I feel like I needed to pull the pink back in, but I'm still just not, I'm not in love with it. So we're going to keep trudging along. Initially, I wanted to strip back the edging too, but I quickly realized that this was just edge banding and sanded right through it. So bye-bye hard work sanding and we're painting. Since I knew it wasn't gonna bleed through because I primed earlier, I just went directly onto the wood. I was trying to be careful that I didn't get paint on the top, so I'm brushing up and down, but then I went over it long ways to make it a clean line. Then it was time to deal with my exposed wood. Originally thought I was gonna paint wash it, that's what I'm doing here. Because the paint I was using was a neutral, I went ahead and mixed the chai latte with a little bit of water and started to apply it. And then you'll see me step back and panic because I realized it was too thick and I was starting to hate it. I needed to water it down a little bit more, but there was paint already on the wood, so I got a spray bottle filled with just water and spritzed it down before I laid down more paint. I just wanted the wash to neutralize the wood so when I applied my poly, it wouldn't turn orange, so I'm wiping any excess back so it doesn't completely saturate the wood. I'm also working in sections because it's gonna dry pretty quickly and again, I want this to be even and I don't want it to be super blotchy. Then I applied that same paint wash over the drawer faces. This set had five and a half inch pulls, which is not easy to find replacements for. And look how gross these things are. So I'm gonna clean them up with some Barkeeper's Friend. You just sprinkle a little over the top after you get the surface wet and then brush it in. This was my first time working with this product and I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't ready for the smell. We've got our PPE on and I'm using an old toothbrush. You can already see all that built up dirt and grime coming off. And here's the result. Oh, wow, such a huge difference. I tested the improved hardware back on the dresser and I realized there's just not enough contrast in this piece. So I'm going back over that wash with a stain. Yes, you can apply stain on top of a paint wash, but it's gonna look a little aged or milky underneath. So you gotta keep that in mind. I let that stain dry. We're gonna come back to it. I need to take a break. So let's go back to the structural repairs. Ignore how dirty the bottom is. I did clean it up, but right now we are just taking off the particle board underneath that's holding this thing up. I'm using a multi-tool to score along the edge so I can make sure that it's flush. Once I get my line scored, then I can go straight down. But if you don't score your line first, you're Tool can jump around and I want this line as straight and flush as possible. We also fix the nightstand top by gluing it down and then nailing it in just to make sure it's extra secure. This definitely should have been done before it was painted but I just had to touch it up. 
I ordered some new feet for these pieces off of Amazon, but before we could attach them, we needed to create a solid base for them to sit on. I don't like to attach feet to the outside trim. It doesn't really have the structural integrity to really hold the weight of the dresser. So my dad cut some blocks, glued them in, and then pressed them in with clamps. And shocker, we're back to the drawers and it looks like I've changed my mind once again. It just looked unfinished for some reason, so I primed and we are gonna paint the outside of these drawers. It saddens me to watch this because it was a lot of work to hand sand those edges. In the arms of an angel, fly away. Anyway, and I forgot a key part of the stain process. This was maple, so it does not stain very well. I should have used a wood conditioner, but I didn't. And it looks blotchy. It looked bad. It had to go. The veneer was too thin for me to try to remove the paint wash and the stain, so I just scuffed it and then primed, and we are painting it. The more I edit this video, the more PTSD this, this piece brings me. So let's just skip to the end. Big changes were made. I totally decided that the paint wash stain combo looked like trash, so we redid that. So that means that I had to sand on all the drawer faces again. I used a wood conditioner, and I restained with Golden Oak by Minwax. I also had to switch out the hardware because I couldn't find a matching knob to the original pull. Thankfully, I was able to find these five and a half inch pulls off of Wayfair. I matched them with these knobs I already had. I sealed it with polyurethane, three coats. And this by far is my least favorite flip. Okay, let's recap. Whoa, shining bright like a diamond. All right, that was my least favorite project by far. It took way too many tries to get that finished. I did sell it the next day for $550, which is awesome, but I just needed it out of the garage. I probably would have listed it higher if I could wait, but I couldn't. I had been looking at that. Really, I started that project in December. I finished it in February. That's how long it took me. And by all the outfit changes, you can definitely see how many days that I attempted to work on that dresser. And with the broken drawers, my dad actually helped me. He cut new drawer tracks, which I'm very thankful that he is always willing to help me. I did not show that in the process, but this, this flip, was it worth it profit-wise? Kind of, not really. Would I do it again? No. But thanks for watching. Please subscribe. See you next time.